chemotherapy for Tessie's cancer, uh, performed by Dr. Jim Porter. Current patient is a 33-year-old male with past history of a right orchiectomy in 2012. The pathology showed 90%, 95% seminoma and 5% embryonal carcinoma. Patient underwent afterwards two cycles of biomycin plus a toposite plus platinum. In 2016, patient underwent a left orchiectomy. The pathology so, showed a classical seminoma plus intratubular neoplasia. In 2017, patient had a left parotic lymphadenopathy recurrence treated with four cycles of etoposate with complete response. Afterwards, in March 2019, a PET-CT scan showed an hypermetabolic left parotic adenopathy of 23 millimeters. In May 2019, a biopsy was took in our center with inconclusive pathology. Current tumor testis markers are negative. We can see in the image the CT scan where the hypermetabolic lesion is shown. Good morning. <laughs> You're online. Hello. I'm alive. Um, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Hi. Good morning. Thank you all. Um, we are here ready to uh, perform a robotic retroperitoneal lymph node dissection for post chemotherapy mass. I'm Jim Porter. We have a great team assembled this morning. Um, of course, you all know Brandon, he's my bedside assistant, and we have Teresa, our scrub, uh, and we have Anna, our anesthesiologist, mm -hmm. and we have lots of support from our team here, so we're very excited for this case. As you've seen, the data is a 33-year-old gentleman um, with seminoma, possible NSGCT, he's had bilateral orchiectomies, he has a residual mass in the left renal hilum, he has had, he had chemotherapy, and this mass is still per uh, persistent. Uh, marker negative. So our approach in these masses is to do a full bilateral uh, dissection, um, especially in this case since he has bilateral testicular cancer. Um, we are going to focus a lot of our attention on the mass uh, to try and remove the mass. And then if we can, if it's feasible, we will attempt to do nerve sparing because we're going to do a, a bilateral dissection. Now you could argue what's the point of nerve sparing in someone uh, without uh, fertility, but um, you know, we're still going to make that attempt. Um, we have the patient, I'd like to focus now on our, our patient position and port placement. We have the patient supine with the arms tucked at the sides, legs are straight out, supported, and the, the patient's in about 20 degrees Trendelenburg. So just for orientation, this is the patient's foot and the head is on the other side of the robot. If we can focus in on the ports, we're using a four port configuration and we have one assistant port. So. If we come on in a little closer, this is the patient's right lower quadrant. We have our assistant midway between the arm number one, the left robotic arm, and then this is the camera. This camera has a 30 degree down lens, and we're gonna turn that to a 30 degree up lens just by hitting the, the button on the XI to look at the anterior abdominal wall. Just to the right of the camera is my arm number three, and I have a, a pair of hot shears through there. And then to the right of my arm number three, arm number four is a progress. So these, um, ports are in a line about seven centimeters apart. What I've marked out here on the abdomen are the median umbilical ligaments. These ports are about four centimeters below the level of the umbilicus. So we're below um, the umbilicus and we're, when we're going upwards, we're, we're projecting upwards towards the patient's head. Trendelenburg allows the small bowel and the, and the colon to fall cephalad, so it gives us more room. Um, and so our first step is going to create our exposure. And this supine approach um, allows us to have full access from ureter to ureter, from hilum all the way to the inguinal canal. But the way we gain that exposure is we're going to create an incision <coughs> starting at the cecum, going to the ligament atrites, and cutting the posterior peritoneum. We're gonna use the cut edges of the posterior peritoneum as a barrier. We're going to suture these up to the abdominal wall to create, um, first of all, exposure, but also it, it allows the small bowel to, to stay out of our way. So we'll show you that technique. Alberto wanted us to show you that, so we're going to show you our exposure. So with that, we'll, uh, I'll get to the console. Any questions from the panel? Hello, good morning, uh, Dr. Porter. Good morning. Can you explain us, how are you? And can you explain us what is this approach better than the going from, uh, from up, up to down? Up to down? I mean, because you are going from down. Right. 
Well, I mean, uh, going up to the. Yeah, I, I think I understand your question, but I mean, well, the classic way this was done was lateral, putting the patients like in a kidney position yeah. mm -hmm. and then working on one side. The problem with that is that you could only do one side. And so if you had to do a post chemotherapy bilateral dissection, it was very difficult to get to the other side. It was dangerous. It was a, actually, it was a deep hole. Um, in fact, if you really wanted to do a good dissection, you'd have to reposition and go to the other side laterally. This approach, supine, going from the bottom up, gives you full access, and I'll, and I'll show you that. I don't think you could go, go from the top down because you'll have the bowel in your way. And so there is this window that if you can move the bowel cephalad to get everything out of your way, and that's what we're going to do. Yes, yes, yes. Do we, we, have, can hear, hear. We, have, we have communication? Well. All right, wonderful. Okay, so just for orientation, this is the uh, right iliac artery. This is probably ureter. Huh. This is, of course, the appendix. Uh -huh. And what I'm going to do is I'm, make, I'm going to make an incision here, just underneath the cecum, through the posterior peritoneum. I'm going to carry it up uh -huh. this direction, and I'm going to make a flap here. And I'm going to suspend that flap up to give us exposure, okay? okay? Does that make sense? Okay, good. All right. Yes, I think so. If it doesn't, it will eventually. Hope <laughs> <laughs> nope, everybody's doing well today. <laughs> So this patient is very thin. I'm very pleased to have a thin patient. And it's very nice to have that. So here's my cut edge. Now I'm going to create a flap. I'm going to work underneath this. So for this surgery, you prefer the uh, the, 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 the bipolar uh, forces instead of the uh, Maryland? Yes, I do. I like the blunt. I like the blunt tip because I'm going to do a lot of blunt dissection. The Maryland is a nice dissector, but it's a little it's a little sharp for what I want to do. So um, this is the cord structure I just kind of got into right there. So there's the cord. That'll become clear mm -hmm. in a moment. So you can see I'm, I'm actually trying to create a flap here. I'm, I'm at, you know, I'm consciously mm -hmm. create, leaving thickness on here. This is. This, this is small, this is bowel here, bowel mesentery, and there's a lymph node in the bowel mesentery. That's not a lymph node that we care about. We see it very well. Good. Yeah, I know I am, Brando. I know it.
Okay, so let's go to the left side now. So I have a cut edge over here as well. So these right here are postganglionic fibers. These are fibers that come off the hypogastric plexus. These these are nerve fibers right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you want other things? Wow. You will try to respect that. I mean, to yeah, I'm going to try to. If we can save them, we will. But you know, it all depends on how things go. There's my left common. Suck, suck. Mm -hmm. So what is the lateral limit there? The lateral limit on this side would, will be the ureter. Uh -huh. This may be the IMA right here. Or it could uh -huh. be, I, I, I'm trying to find out, yeah, this is my common here, that might be IMA. Alrighty then. Let's take a quick look here, Brando. Am I am I on you right now? Yeah. I won't be long. I'm sorry. It won't be long, Brando. Okay. I apologize. Okay. All right, let's do, um, let's do needle drivers. Two needle drivers, arm one, arm three. And then let's have the long suture, Brando, the, the uh, suspension suture. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in a, um, a, uh, it's a, I think it's a 3 monofilament suture, like a monocryl, SH needle, and we're gonna suspend this right um, cut edge upward. I'm just kind of getting a sense of where this wants to go. So somewhere here.
See, that can be better this way. Maybe I'll just come down a little bit. I don't normally cross like that, but I don't think it's going to matter. All right, and then we're just going to take some of the slack out. Got a hemolock, Brando? Hold on. Yeah, go ahead. All right, so there's the one side. So is, see what this does is it creates exposure, but look, the small bowel really has no way of falling around here. The other thing that's important, just so you understand for your exposure, if you ever try to do this on your own, which, you know, good luck. Anyway, I don't, you don't want to cut this right here. You want to leave this intact. If you, if you release the cecum, then the small bowel can kind of fall underneath here. So it's ideal to leave that exactly where it is, okay? So what I'm going to do with that exposure now is I'm going to continue my dissection. And then I'm probably going to end up taking the IMA in this case because of the left-sided tumor. The IMA, I believe, is right, going to be right here. And that'll allow me to get more exposure here as well, okay? So let's go do that, Brandon. Let's have scissor and bipolar back. All right, so let's continue our dissection, Seth Lad. Mm -hmm. I need you to plug in the uh, scissor, please, the uh, power, please. Thank you. So here's duodenum. That's duodenum right there. Uh -huh. And this blue structure here is the left renal vein, I'm pretty sure. Possibly, we'll see. It's, or if it's not, it's the cava up here. Actually, no, it's probably cava because we're still on the aorta here. There's lymph node tissue. That is the renal vein. I think that's the cava. I think that's the yeah. cava. Yeah, I misspoke. No, I mean, I said that. Up. Yeah, we'll see the renal vein very quickly here, the left renal vein. So again, I'm still defining this left-sided flap.
Nice, Brando. You're amazing. You are. There we go. There's our friend the ureter finally. There's his cord. This is a left cord. Yeah, yeah. There's the ureter. Uh -huh. All right, good. We're going to keep defining these things. This is the IMV right there, the interior mesenteric vein. Okay. It's on the side of the, uh, mm -hmm. the mesocolon. So we're basically working underneath the left mesocolon now. You see it's a distinct plane. This is a very large lymphatic channel here we're going to have to clip. These are, these are very large lymphatics. They come off the pancreas. They go over the left renal vein, which we're seeing right now. Here's the left renal vein. Yeah. All right, Brando, we might have to... We might have to use robotic clip. This is, a, this is one of the giant lymphatics you have to be aware of. So one of the ways, you know, <coughs> this operation can result in chylocystitis, and, and, and you have to be very careful about the lymphatic channels. We've discovered where the big ones are. That's a huge lymphatic. I don't know if you can appreciate that, it, but that's massive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's we're going to clip well. that. Uh, Rando, why don't, why don't you see if you can get it? If you can, I'll get the, the, the applier in there, okay? Yeah, Hemolock. No, go Hemolock. You, you try it, okay? Just, you do it, Brando. Dr. Porter, one question, Dr. Rajifo. Do you, do you use this approach also in unilateral RRP? Oh, no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Brando, up, up here, up here. Good, right there, good. Yeah, do another one just to be safe. I, it's, I know it's lymphatics, so I just wanna make sure. I'll get to your question in one little moment. No, no, Brando, right above me, above me, above me. Brando, oh, whatever. Go, go ahead, go forward, go forward. All right, whatever, good. Okay, another clip, Brando. Yeah, another clip. One second, Brando, let me get better exposure. Hold on. No, you're good, you're good. Clip. So these, are, these lymphatics going over the left renal uh, vein are extremely important. They're big. Up here, yep, push in, good. Up, up, Brandon, sorry, I want you to, yeah, good. These, that's, this is staying in, this is the side I wanna stay in, thank you. So I think for just for the sake of demonstration purposes, let's show them the other instrument. Okay, let's, Brando, give me the, um, the robotic, okay? Uh, Hem clip applier, robotic hemolock. Scissor out. So another instrument that I like for this case is, I can just get angles here. Sometimes my assistant can't get certain angles and this is very helpful. All right, scissor. So we're gonna use that if we need to, depending on you know where we are. 
especially when we're working underneath the aorta. It's very helpful sometimes to have that. These are still some more lymphatics right here. The gonadal here. Mm. Uh, yes. Gonadal vein. All the way lumbar there. Lumbar there, yes. Renal artery. No, no, inside, inside, Brando, inside. All right, we'll come back to that. <clears throat> Are you going to suspend the right side also? I think so. Let okay, the left Brando, side. Let, let's have a uh, needle drivers in and, uh, and another stitch. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, I, I was asking you if you do the same approach, even if you are going to plan a unilateral RPLD. If I'm going to do what? A, a primary RPLD? Unilateral, yeah. Unilateral? unilateral uh, yes. So I use this approach if I'm going to do a unilateral. Yes. And the reason is when you do a unilateral primary RPLD, what I do is I send the lymph nodes for frozen section. If they're positive, um, then we do a bilateral dissection. So you want to be prepared to do that. So when we do a primary RPLND, which is, I would say, pretty rare, I would say most of what we're doing is post chemotherapy, uh, we, we use this approach. That's a good question.
You ready, Brando? Yep. You think you can get one here or not? Uh, All right. Just be amazing, will you? Good. I mean, you could do more throws if you wanted to, but I think this is going to be fine. Okay. Let's go monopolar, bipolar back. So, as I've said before, I like to think about this exposure in two separate um, uh, fields, if you will. I think about the proximal exposure, which is this area here, and then the distal. The proximal is created by the sutures. The distal is created by my fourth arm. So if, when I need to be up here, this is where I'll bring my fourth arm in and help with the duodenum and, and the more, more distal exposure, if you will. Okay, so I think it's nice to think of the exposure in, in those terms. Jim? Yes. It's Alberto. Alberto, thank you. Hello. Hello, super, super exposure as always. So I have two questions for you. The first being, uh, uh, for the indications of this surgery. Mm -hmm. um, let's say that, that this w was a pure seminoma, no right. embryonal. Right. And after chemotherapy, there is a residual tumor of two centimeters. Right. What would you do at home? Yeah, well, at home, if it's two centimeters or less, after chemotherapy and it's seminoma, the chance of those recurring is extremely low. So we would follow those masses with markers and, and imaging. And if they increased, then we might, you know, we might have to do something. There might be residual disease. But in general, uh, for post-chemo seminoma, pure seminoma now, not, not embryonal, uh, you know, if it's a small mass, two centimeters or less, we would follow it. We would not, we would not do surgery on it. All right, I agree with you, but the fact that there was 5% of uh, embryonal, I think, right. in this situation, uh, um, justify right. a, a template, at least. I agree. No, I, I agree with you. Uh, I would not be excited about doing a post-chemotherapy seminoma. I can tell you that right now. Um, I, I don't remember from the patient's history, but was there initial AFP elevation back in 2012? Do we know? I can't remember. Um, uh, I, I can't remember yeah. either. Uh, but the, the, the second question is, uh, um, given the fact that this was uh, uh, a seminoma, 95% on one testicle, 100% on the other testicle, right. and given the fact that you have only one mass that is two centimeter at the hilum, would it make sense uh, to take only the mass out? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, some people have do that. In fact. The Indiana group um, has published extensively on removing masses only, and they have a very low recurrence rate. Right here, Brandon, over here, please. Uh, so you, there, is, there is precedent for that. There is um, a, a, seri a, a series from, from Indiana that, where they just took out the mass, and they have extremely low recurrence rate. Uh, so uh, yeah, you could argue that that is a reasonable approach, of course. What you gain by that is less morbidity, especially in the way of ejaculatory dysfunction. So um, I think that's reasonable. All right, that's, that's a good answer. No, I was thinking because, you know, as you already said, and we discussed this before, uh, you know, seminoma is definitely a different disease, uh, and to do an RPLNE in a seminoma is, is much, much more yeah, difficult. So, yes. And I was thinking, you know, if you get in an, into troubles and you see that uh, right. it's unresectable disease, right. uh, maybe it would be it would make sense just to go directly to the lesion and take just the well, node well, that, out. That's what I'm. That's my plan is to go right. I'm gonna. Go, I'm not gonna go to the right. I normally start on the right side first, but I'm gonna go right to the mass here. So, in order to get to this mass, I'm gonna take. This is the inferior mesenteric artery. Just to confirm, I just I, I just identified the left common. Uh, iliac artery here, okay? So this is not the common, this is the common, okay? So this is the IMA, and we are going to control this with clips. And then th what that's going to do, when we open that up, that's gonna open up this entire space here. And we're, we're gonna go to the left side first and, and take the mass out, okay? Okay. And for the sake of time, obviously, we will go right to that, that area and see how, <clears throat> how, how, uh, how um, reactive it is. Correct, okay. 
Okay. All right. All right. Go ahead. All right. Great. Thank you. Brando, are you get are you ready to do something special here in a minute? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just kind of skinning this off because this is lymphatic tissue. I'm just trying to get off this artery because once I clip it, it's going to be a little harder to get this off. So I want to get this lymphatic stuff off. That's a big artery. Hello. Okay, Brando, hemolox, two and two. Good. So after we, after we divide this, then this space is gonna become a little more evident. And my bias when I do a dissection is to start from the bottom and go up. I could start at the hilum, but it's just a little more challenging. So I'm going to start below here in a second. So you should be able to take the IMA in a young man like this. There should be very good collateral f uh, flow to the colon. I've never had an issue doing this, but of course I'm operating in young people. I don't know if I could say the same thing about an older patient, but um, in young patients, we have no issue taking the IMA. All righty. So there's the general femoral nerve right there. Right there. So we're going to dissect out the cord. And we're going to spend the we're going to spend the majority of our time now on the left side here, left side of the aorta. And all this work I just did is going to be helpful. Another question, Dr. Porter. In the follow-up of these patients after after chemotherapy, do you usually use the PET-CT? The PET scan? Some, some data that says this PET scan, yeah. PET scan? Um, well, yeah. if there's a question, we tend to just follow markers and then CT scan. If there's a question about if something's growing, or let's say it's growing and they're marker negative, then we might do a PET scan. Um, uh, you know, it's not something that we do uh, like a reflex. It's not part of our routine um, surveillance. But we do it if there's a question.
<laughs> right here, Brando. Yep, right there, perfect. It is what it is. So I'm just going to take this down to, sorry, Rando, sorry. Lymph node, clearly. Yeah. Clip, Brando. So cord, ureter, mm -hmm. cord crossing ureter, and then this is just a little something it could be perinephric fat for all I know, but we're gonna cut, we're gonna take it. Might be the artery. So d don't you like to use the uh, the uh, ligature instead of uh, so many clips, or do you think it's better the clips? So ligature, you mean um, robotically controlled or by the assistant? Yes, yes, the yes, the robotic. So the vessel sealer, you mean, or ligature? Yeah, I mean. Uh, 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 it's like the uh, ligature, but it's right. a vessel sealer, yes. Right. So we, yeah, so um, we, we have that available. Um, and uh, I have no problem with clips. Um, I, I don't think there's any issue with them. But the reason I have it, the vessel sealer available is we're going to take the lumbars. And this is a very good way to take the lumbar arteries and veins. So I'll show you that in a minute. Hopefully in a minute. It might be an hour. <laughs> ah, there's a vein. Eh. So, where the ureter crosses the iliac is the lower extent of our node dissection. So that's our that's our boundary there. We're going to uh, take this lymphatic tissue. These little branches here aren't important. This is important, though. So, Brando, let's just see what we got here. Yep, we're gonna, that's just smudge there. That's not real. That's perfect. Stay right there, Brando. You're amazing. Okay, let's see what that's about. 
Come on, off second. So one of the nice things about the DaVinci XI that I'm using right now is that I can actually go backwards. So relative to my ports right now, I'm actually going um, backwards towards the patient's foot. And I, so I'm below my ports looking backwards. And there's, so we've, we've initiated or, or um, used a function on the DaVinci XI called reach. Reach allows the arms to rotate out of their way which means when the, when the arm rotates out of its way, the arm can go backwards farther, which means I can go this direction. Okay, that's, I'm looking down in the pelvis now, okay? That's because the, the way the arms are engineered, we can, um, we can gain a lot of uh, backwards motion, which is extremely important for this operation. So I, you know, I started this operation with the SI, um, it can be done, but in order for us to get the cord, we had to redock to get the cord with the SI. Now with the XI, I'll be able to get the cord out of the inguinal canal without having to redock. So that's a nice benefit. But it, it just gives you more coverage than you know we were getting previously. So general femoral nerve, no reason to mess with that. Okay. All right, Brando. We're gonna, we're gonna push the iliac down, good. That's the common iliac vein over there. A little branch coming off the common iliac. Okay. Let's get ready with clippage. Okay, Brando, clip. So this is the distal extent of the uh, para-aortic nodes. You can see it very well. Oh yeah, Brando, perfect. Yeah, these, this scissor is not ideal. Okay, good. Can we get another one? I, I know I'm a visitor, but I'd love to get a sharp pair of scissors. I know all those are reserved for Dr. Breda because... Huh? <laughs> yeah, okay. Do I have to like give me my passport or something to get new scissors or what do I have to do? So, just want to show I just want to show the audience. So, in distinction to the general femoral nerve which is here, you see another white structure right down here, right? Those are nerves. That's no. a, that's a sympathetic uh, trunk, if you will, oh, a sympathetic chain. Okay, right there. And we're going to follow that up. Okay, Brando. Let's um, see if I've set this up for you well enough. Okay, let's try and clip here. Oh yeah. Yeah, down, yep. Less iliac issues. Okay, push forward, push forward. Good. Not too forward. Pull back, 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 back. Right there, good. Good. Okay.
Mhm. Tak, tak. Mhm. Ja są. And we got a little bleeder that kind of fell in there. All right, so now. Lumbar. Sympathetic trunk. Yeah, Brando, perfect. Stay right there. So what I'm doing, I'm just for the sake of like, you know, um, educational purposes, I'm looking for the, the postganglionic fibers, which I think this is one of them right here. The left side, the fibers are very small. On the right side, we could probably see them much better, and I'm just gonna kind of look here, but the time to find them is before you start doing a bunch of division. So this is probably one fiber right here. Yeah, you can kind of see it's becoming a trunk. How are we doing on those scissors? Has the United <laughs> has the United States Embassy called back yet? And has they confirmed my my citizenship so I can get these scissors or what? <laughs> oh, you are! Oh my God, that's so cool. Okay, so hold on. I'm just so this is a this is some of the nerve trunks right here. This is the hypogastric plexus right here. And the fibers are gonna come kind of um, underneath the cava here, so between the cava and aorta. So we'll, we'll look at that later. I'm gonna continue up on the left side. Let's, let's, um, let's bring in some new scissors. Brando, right here. Thank you. Stay right there, doctor. Hello. Yeah, go ahead, Brando. Go ahead. So we're starting to see a little Kyle already, you see? I'm telling you. Too much Iberico ham for this guy.
I really like Iberico. I mean, it's amazing. It's one of my reasons I love to come. All right, so we're going to develop this some more. And of course, I'm going to get retro aortic as well. Yeah, okay, let's clip this. This is uh, the left sided fibers. No question. Good. They're sharper. Brando, thank you, right there, perfect.
So sympathetic chain. Thank you, Brando. So you're not, not going to take in the uh, gonado? Oh, we're going to take it. Yep. We're going to take it. It's going to follow it up. in there, yeah. There's a big lymphatics there, mother, mother lymphatics. Yes. Oh, Lord. <laughs> One question, uh, Porter. Of course, please. What are the, your limits with the robotic approach? What are the what? What case do you will not recommend to do by with the robot? Yeah. Um, well, I think, you know, I, I can give you kind of the um, theoretical answer and then um, <laughs> the practical answer. Um, so this is a, this is a large post-ganglionic fiber that, that's coming off the sympathetic chain. That's going into our packet here. Yes. So we're going to just cut that cold. That's a nerve. So I think, you know, a really large mass that's going to require a nephrectomy, an on block nephrectomy with a, with a mass, I mean, it can be done. I've actually done it, but uh, is that a good indication? I don't know. Um, um, I think, you know, there's, I th I, you know, I, you could argue that if a patient required simultaneous uh, liver resection for, for a, a MET or something like that, that that might be better done open just because obviously, you know, your colleagues may or may not be comfortable doing what you're doing robotically. So, you know, that's another situation. I, I know personally, I have not seen the size of the mass or location really dictate anything yet. I think, I think seminoma is probably contraindication for, for robotic. I mean, I. I'm sure somebody's going to do that. We've done pre-chemotherapy seminomas, but not post-chemotherapy. Um, so, yeah, we got Kyle. We got to find that source. That's not what we don't want. That's exactly where I'm. I was saying was going to come from is that spot right up here. So you see this Brando right here. That's Kyle. We don't want to leak. Oh, there's an open channel right there, maybe. All right, give me, give me, a, give me one of my clips. Give me a robotic, okay? I mean, the time to do this is now, so you can watch it the rest of the case and see how it does. So 
so how many of these do you do every every year more or less well i do one at every challenges for sure <laughs> <laughs> they won't even let they won't even let me walk in the door if i don't do this it's crazy um <laughs> I do, you know, it depends. I, you know, I, some years I do a number of them, some years it varies. I mean, I would say on average I do between five, well, I would say five is a low year, 10 is a normal year. Um, okay, scissor back. Um, and that's not counting the ones I do in Europe, you know, or Asia. Most of all of them are- So you do, doing many? Most of them are all post chemotherapy masses, you know. Suck, please. Yeah. Let's see what that does for us, Brian. Let's suck and clean this up because we want to follow that to see if that made a difference for us. Suck that, suck that nonsense right there, and see what that is. Just clot. Yeah. So let's keep an eye on this. I think that might help us. But I'm telling you, that's a big area. That's something we've learned over time. Is it's not just putting clips, but where you put them that makes a difference in, in this chylus leak issue. We routinely put our patients on a low-fat diet after surgery, and that's because, you know, these these patients will eat very quickly. They they feel very good. The problem is your the lymphatic channels have had not had a chance to to seal yet, and that's different from open surgery, where a lot of time the patients after open surgery they haven't they don't feel like eating right away, and so it gives things a chance to kind of seal over before you you subject it to a, a um, you know, a fat stress. So, so this is something I'm gonna divide with clips, just to be safe. This is a big, I, I think I'm gonna have to do this side for sure. This is, this is inter to cable here. I think, uh, uh, Alberto, we're gonna have to do this side for sure. I think it's gonna be more than the mass. I, I'm not sure I need to do the right side, but we'll see. Okay, Brandon, let's, let's clip here. The reason I'm going to clip is I just don't want a bunch of, I don't want any spillage here if there's, if there's any kind of tumor in here. Okay, so let's go right here. Uh-huh. Push in, push in, push in, good. Good. Another one. So I'm going to separate the para-aortics from the uh, interaortic, interaortic cable and the preortics, right there. Uh-huh. Good. Take it. Yeah, let's go another one. Uh-huh. Good, take it. Another one. Right next to it, yeah. Good. Take it, you're good. There's right renal artery, right there. Okay. Left renal artery. Okay. Well, it's not looking like seminoma, Alberto. unless he didn't get chemotherapy. Doc.
It's a big lumbar. Second, Brando, come on. Big lymphatics. Give me um, a robotic clip in my right hand, please. I don't think you can get the angle. And then let's get that vessel sealer ready to go. I'm gonna take this lumbar with the vessel sealer. But let me have the, uh, the clip first, Brando. Clip and then scissor and then vessel sealer. Yeah, that's all Kyla's down there. Oh, my Lord. Okay. Um, let's go another. Give me another one of these hemolocks. What? Which one? Ligature? Well, no, the assistant, the problem with the ligature, I mean, if, that, if they make it for the robot, that's fine, but I, I haven't seen it yet. I, 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 have the, I use a vessel sealer, but, I, but the vessel sealer and the ligature are pretty much the same thing, so... So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna show you that in a minute here. My bias is we'll get back here. Yeah, I just got that lumbar with that. That was not good. That's all right. Give me a scissor back. And then, Brando, we're gonna go um, suck here first. It's gonna go, we're just gonna see what kind of little issue we have here. It's not much. All right, so Brando, vessel sealer in the left hand, fenestrate it out.
So this is the anterior spinous ligament. I don't know if you can appreciate that. That's the anterior spinous mm -hmm. ligament. Yeah. Is that please? Yes. All right, so now we're up pretty high here. So now let's see if we can make some progress. Brandon, do you think you can clip that right there? That's, that's a bunch of lymphatics right there. Can you clip that or, or I'll do it either one? Yeah, we'll get you the angle, don't worry. I'm getting it for you right now, I'm working on it. Yep. Watch the vein, good, good, right there, take it. Suction. A second there for me, Brando. Going to a lumbar there, that's okay. <coughs> Back in there, Brando. Show me the artery. There's the artery. the uh, cord, the canal vein. Mm -hmm. Make sure I get perf perfect exposure. Yep, that'd be helpful. Thank you. <coughs> now the ureter's far away. We're fine. But it's a good question. A little after the fact though. Suck, please. Suck right there. This is also a big lymphatic channel, but I'm gonna, not a big fan of the energy on the lymphatics. I just don't think they, it works as well, but we're gonna do this one here. These are all giant lymphatics. Suck in that puddle now, Brando. All right, so let's do this. We gotta now work on our lateral extent here. Brandon, please. off, Brando, real quick. Yurgers over here. Brandon, Brandon, 
Well, come off. You're fine. Right there. I know. It's okay. You're fine. Everything's good. No problems. Yep, yeah, go ahead. Yep. Perfect. Thank you. That's the artery. Let's free this cord up from here. We don't need to have this connected. We'll go get this cord at the end. Tug, please. Tug right there. Okay, so now let's take all this, all these big channels here. That's the cruise of the diaphragm starting right there. Okay. Brandon, let's just see. That was really nice. Thank you. Stuck here. Yeah, there's a big vein in there. Yeah. Brandon, please move. I'm trying to see underneath it. Thank you. So that's a big vessel. A very, very thin wall, huh? Yeah, it's a big vein. Hold the order back, Randall. Hold the order back. Thank you. Good. Take it. Good. Sucker. <coughs> Another clip. 
clip. Go ahead. I want you right here. Good. Clip. Higher, higher, higher. Good, right there. Okay. All right, so that's good there. Take a look. Very nice dissection. Yeah, thank you. Let's make sure we got a good hemostasis. And we don't have a bunch of lymphatic leakage. Okay, so now we're going to go over here. Really? You don't bleed on me, seriously? Rando, we have the bipolar back here in a second. I think I'm, this is not as precise. It's good for vessels, it's just not as precise. Let's have the, yep. All right, so let's just say, for example, we were actually gonna do nerve sparing. So we would split right over the cava, separating the intertocaval from the paracaval. <coughs> Continue this down. The cord structure's there. side, the canal. Okay. 
σωστό. All right, so what I'm going to do now, work on the cable side here. There's a fiber right there, a small one. Not very big, but we'll get a bigger one. Suck in there, Brando. Thank you. Small lumbar. <coughs> there's a get there's a fiber right there. Brandon, come off. You're covering the fiber. They can't see it. Lumbar, you got very small lumbar here. Push here, please. Suck, Brando. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Run down from. Okay. Okay, just continue to work here. <coughs> 50, Jesus. No, it's just. That's okay, Brandon, we're good. I just gotta be careful when I pull off. We can just be good, we can just be careful.
Okay. So the point of this exercise was to find these postganglionic trunks, which are right here. They're not very big, this guy. Normally they can be very, quite large. But the idea is you want to going to use cold dissection around them. We had three of them, I thought. We have one, two, and then one above. Suck up here. There it is. Three. We can see very well. You see nice them? Section. Yeah, so this is... Yes, perfectly. This is the concept for nerve sparing. Now, what you have to do is you've got to trace these and dissect them away from the lymphatics, and you've got to trace these to the um, hypogastric plexus, which is basically lying right on top of the lymphatic. So it's, you know, it's the challenge. There's no question, it's a challenge. Oh, look, another trunk. But it can be done. You want to make sure you keep your eye on your trunks because it's very easy to cut your trunks when you're messing around with these nodes. Uh -huh. I've done it a hundred times. And then you have no communication. So, so this is the hypogastric plexus, this, this trunk of nerves here that I'm cutting. This is actually where I cut that large trunk off the left side. That's, where that is. That's what that represents. Much easier to spare the right side than the left side, I can tell you, just from my experience. So we're behind the, we're gonna do our retroaortic as well. So we're just gonna make sure we get all the lymphatics off of here that we, are supposed to. Mm-hmm, Randall, yep. <laughs> 
Okay, not connected. Mm-hmm. What's wrong, Brando? Are you losing interest? What's happening over there? Uh, not at all, but you are very concentrated. Yeah, Brando, come off the nerve, thank and you. And you're showing very well and exposing everything perfectly. Yeah. No, I'm talking to my assistant, Brandon. You guys, I know, are, are interested. He's, <laughs> I, I think he's, he's looking for lunch or something right now. I have no idea what he's doing. Brandon, what are you doing over there? You know, okay, that's fine. You guys are interested, I know. It's just... Oh, hello, giant lumber. Mm -hmm. Another lumbar. All right, let's go back to our nerve sparing. And now just kind of resetting ourselves, see what's connected, what we have to free up. I think that I can take, although you never know. Come off, Brando. Suck the puddle. Make it pretty. There you go. All right. Okay, back here now. Let's go right to here. All right, so we're starting with the one nerve here. Hello. Jim, they're going to present another case that's going to be at the same time as your case. So. Oh, sure. We're going to disconnect like, no. Okay, that's five fine. Five minutes, something like that. Okay, no, take okay. your time. I'll, uh, okay. I'll be here, I'm sure. Suck, please. Hello. <laughs> okay. I will still be working long into the night. 
Mm-hmm. Suck here, Brandon, real quick. Perfect. Nice. Oh, that's nice, Brando. All right, it's good. We have a little break now. We can just operate. <coughs> All right, so let's really go after this trunk here. Big trunk there. Uh-huh. Oh, I just tear one. All right. Yeah, that's all right. You only need about three. Very, di very difficult to preserve that tiny yeah. nerve. Yeah, that so. tiny one, yeah. I think we're going to have, we've got two down below here. And then we're mm -hmm. going to have this nice trunk. And then we might get this one here, this middle one here. All right, so let's try and preserve the, oh, Brando, take, come off, you're good. Just pull, just pull, there you go. Right in here, that's a lumbar. Okay, we gotta get that lumbar off. Oh yeah, there's a clip from the other side. Magical clip. Is that the please? That could be cisterna right there. Right there, that could be Cisterna Kyla. All righty then. Let's make sure we preserve this bundle here. Uh-huh, Brando, yeah. Okay, this side now. Come off, Randall. Come off. Out. Thank you.
You're fine, Brandon. Get out of there. It's a cistern or a Kyler right here. I'm gonna clip it. You're not gonna clip that. I'm gonna clip that. That's a big, that's the whole, that's the whole deal right there. That's where everything leaks. I wish uh, Andrea Minervini were here. Um, yeah, uh, give me a clip. And we, we did a case, we did a case in Florence and the cisterna kyla was so big, I thought I was in the bowel. It, it was absolutely huge. It looked like a bowel. And the guy didn't leak, apparently, because he hasn't told me anything. Yeah. Absolutely, Brando. Suck both sides. Yep, this side. This is it. This is the big deal right here. All right, scissor, one second, scissor. Yep. See, there is a channel right there. Oh my God, look at that lymphatic right there. Yeah, look at that lymphatic, oh my Lord. Clip that, clip, clip that Brando. Good. Yeah, we gotta clip that. That is the mother load right there. Ah. Okay, give me a clip in my in my in my hand. Scissor out. That would be a very hard clip for you to get in, wouldn't it? Yeah, impossible.
All right, suck. Grasper, Grasper. This is part of enter to cable. Grasper. This is inter air to cable. All right, that's good nerve sparing. I mean, these are not giant trunks, but that's as good as we can do. All right, let's go get the pair of cables. I think we're doing pretty well. Sigmoid colon, you don't need to be there. All right. So these fibers, these are the nerves we're going to leave alone. This is a very interesting, consistent vein right here that always bleeds. Hello, Jim. We are here again with oh, you. Yeah. Oh, hi. Can you tell us something more? 
Uh, well, we Jim, are. We're back with you. Oh, hello, everyone. Thank you. Hi, hi. Um, we are now doing the paracaval lymph nodes, which is the right side. Okay. Um, so we finished the interdecaval, and I did a, I think, a very gotcha. reasonable nerve sparing. Uh, we've got three or four nice trunks, and um, very nice. I'm very pleased with that. Um, it's not easy to do. Um, and now you can see this channel here is our para cables. We're taking them down to where the ureter crosses the right common iliac. And we're gonna clip the distal extent and then we'll take these out. And then the final part of the procedure will be getting both uh, spermatic cords out of the inguinal canals, which will be quite interesting because I've never had to do that for both sides in one, in one procedure. Is that please? Alberto. Chuck, please. I got a little bleeder under the cave, I'm sure it is. Yeah. Do you need, need anything? No, no. Suck there, Brando. Good. Brando, see you in that. Oh, put that. Oh, that's a big lymphatic there. Hello. So there is a question here from the audience saying that how many uh, consecutive lumbar arteries and veins may be safely clipped? Uh, you mean lumbars? Is this yeah. about, about the lumbars? Lumbar arteries and veins. Yeah, and so I guess we could. This I guess we've had this. I've had this discussion before, and I guess it's about concerns about taking too many lumbars and causing spinal um, devascularization. Is that is that the point of the question? Yeah, yeah, something like that. You know, it's uh, the, maybe taking too many. You're causing. Right. The artery of Abramowitz. Um, so you know, I have not had a problem, and I, I've talked to um, vascular surgeons about this. The people that do uh, aortic, you know, recon uh, reconstructions for AAA, and um, it's not a common event. I have not had any problems yet. I, this was brought to my attention at a meeting one time, and I had been doing this operation for many years and taking lumbar's and never had an issue. I, I don't know what the safe number is. I, I can't answer that. I don't know if there is a safe number. Um, but I would say in my clinical experience, I've not had a problem. Go ahead, Brando. I've not had a problem yeah. with taking the lumbars, and that means I've taken them all. And I'm leaving a couple here um, I, on purpose. Uh, I left two on this side. Now there's yeah. a little node right there. You could argue that I need to get that out, and I will. So, I'm a fan of taking the lumbars. I, I'm sure that there, there's no problem if you leave. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you clip 
yeah. lumbar veins, but the arteries maybe is more, you know. Right, the veins I have no issue, the, the, vein, the arteries I've not had any issues with either, so. Um, whether I left one there and I left one up here, suck. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't really know about if this is a, is a, real, a real issue or not. I think it's, it's a, definitely a theoretical thing, and I, I know people, it's, it's written about, but um, I've, I've heard people on both sides say it's not an issue or, you know, so it, it's a good question. I wish, I wish somebody really knew the true answer, because I, I, in my clinical experience, I have not had anyone with an issue. All right, Brando, let's give me the vessel I'm sealer. I'm sure you're right. Yeah. Vessel sealer in my left hand, please. I'm going to take that. Yeah, vessel sealer. I'm going to take that, <coughs> that lumbar. I mean, that gonadal. And then we're going to get that cord freed up. So I think it's a good discussion. But I don't know. I don't know what, what this, if there's a safety issue or not. All right, let's get this case over with. Everybody's pretty, pretty sick of seeing the aorta. Suck, please. Somebody want to talk? No, no, no. Oh, okay. I thought there was a. I thought there was a question. I was getting excited. Somebody wanted to talk. <laughs> it's been a lot of dead air during this operation, but you know, there's not much you can do except watch in this case. Yeah. You're, you're fine, Brando. What do you want to do for me? You want to go here? Push, push there. You're, oh, you're fine. Let's make sure we know where the ureter is before I start digging around. Brandon, get in here, please. Yes, you can. I think we're moving uh, to the other uh, operating okay, room. Okay, good idea. Dr. Amelia, we are with you again. No. Still not. No, Brandon, Brandon. That's not helping me. Yeah, that's the canadal artery.
Okay, come on, Brandon. Come on, Brandon. What am I hitting? Why can't I go backwards? No, I want to go backwards with this. What's going on? No, 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 no. No, I'm not Max. Yeah. No, I need to go backwards. Okay. No, I got I got space now. I got it. Brandon. Brandon, I'm good. Brandon, it's fine. Pull your port back. Pull your port back. Brandon, come on. My fourth, hitting the fourth. Okay. All right, suck. Suck right there, please. Hold over, yep. Mm-hmm. 
the renal vein. What's wrong, Brandon? Well, oh, come on, just get in there. I, I know, I know it's challenging, but. Okay. All right, so there's your, just make sure, hold this over if you can. Renal pelvis, ureter. Good. Okay, give me a clip in my hand, clip, scissor out. Scissor? Possibly. We'll see. Yeah, give me another clip. Scissor. Brandon, please, yeah, you should be helping me, but you're not. All right. Brandon, come in, please. What are you doing? I know, I, you, have to, you have to still try, okay? You, you, gotta, you can't just sit there. Because when I move, you'll be able to get in. Suck right there. I want to make sure we got the ureters intact, okay. Let's get this cord out if we can. Now, give me, um, give me a bipolar back in my left hand.
So Brandon, we may need to adjust these arms a little bit to go backwards, okay? We'll see. Oh yeah, that's got great access. Okay, um, I may have to switch my scissor into the fourth arm in a second here, Brando. Yeah. We'll see. Maybe I'll make it. Maybe I'll make it. Scissors going backwards, and then it stopped. That's the vast. All right, so not getting what I need with my scissor here. Um, and then the fourth arm has perfect access. Okay, so let me do this, hold on. We're gonna come all the way out very safely. We're not gonna do anything crazy. All right, Brando. Um, yeah, yeah, switch the scissor into the fourth arm, please. We just learned something. Get your sucker out of there, Brandon. You're not helping anything. You're not, you can't help me right now, okay? I, 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 I don't need you. I don't need you. Right. Yeah. You're, you're just too close to the work.
That's epigastric right there. Okay, thank you. See you later. Jim? Yes? 
We are with you once again. Uh, I'm honored. Okay, we just took out the, um, the right spermatic cord out of the inguinal canal. I was going straight backwards. So now we're gonna go get the left cord and we should be complete. Brandon, you wanna suck for me a little bit? So we've completed the paracaval, the interdecaval, the retrocaval, retroaortic, and periaortic lymph node dissections. Yes, perfect. We can see it very well. Yeah, it looks pretty good. And then we did some nerve sparing, which was, I think, nice. So there's the bundles. Yes, we saw before when you were performing the interaortocaval okay. notes. All right, so now we've got to go get the cord out on this side, which is going to be a little trickier because we got to go around the um, around the sigmoid. We have to command. A, we have to create a communication around the sigmoid. Why is that bleeding? Really? Suck. Yeah, it is. That's crazy. Let me have this, Brando. Suck. All right. So now, Brando. Um, <laughs> Yeah, let's switch back for now. And, um, and then that, that way I can, I'll finish this cord off. Yeah, I need the fourth arm, exactly. All right, so we're, we're towards the tail end here and then we'll bag all the specimens. Well, I'm gonna put some flow seal in the upper abdomen there just to create a clot and hopefully decrease any lymph lymphatic fluid leakage. And um, hopefully we'll be good. So do you think, Jim, that uh, Flocil can uh, even stop uh, the lymphatic drainage or? Uh, well, my theory is that it causes- It's a just a chance so we, we give to Flocil. Yeah, my, my, my theory is it causes a clot and a clot I think will help, you know, stop lymphatics as well, so. Um, it's, okay, okay. I, I, I have no, the, I have no reason to believe theory. it works, but I do it. So do, do you think uh, even fibrin glue could be a choice in order to, yeah. to stop uh, a bit? Yeah, I think fibrin the... glue, fibrin glue would get washed away quickly. I think it's, you know, flow seal kind of stays in place because of the matrix, you know, material. Uh, fibrin glue is a little liquidy, and I wonder if it would just kind of get washed away. Um, so that's my theory. That's my reasoning. Okay. Come off, Brandon. Let me see it. Thank you. Push the ureter this way for me a second. Thank you. Another vein in there. So I'm gonna take this down as far as I can. Obviously avoiding the ureter. This is where the gonadal crosses the anterior to the ureter. And then in the gonadal goes lateral and the ureter goes medial. Perfect, Brando. Push this back. See if I can get some more. Come out, Brandon. 
No, no, you need to stay here, right here. All right, so we're pretty close there. Let me just, all right, now we're gonna make an adjustment. So what's going on with this arm, Brandon? I can't rotate it at all or anything. Hold on, hold on. It's, that's helping me. I might get lucky here. This arm should not be an issue at all, but it is. I don't know why. The left arm. Okay. All right, let's see if we can get lucky here. There's cord. Oh, come on now. That is not good. Yeah. The camera? Uh, yeah, whatever. I gotta go up here now. All right, so there's our dissection from the other side. Come here, Cord. All right, we are gonna to have to figure out this left hand, Brandon, because I won't be able to go, go much further. Okay. I'm, I'm about hitting my limit right there. Yeah, but I'm not, I'm gonna have a limited, I'm, I'm, I'm really making it happen just because of luck right now. Gotta get. Oh, I'm underneath it now. Thank you. No, I just got underneath it somehow. I think we're okay, Brando. Here's the vas. There's a vasal vessel that wants to bleed, really. I know, I know, it's okay. Can you push that down? 
That'd be, a, that'd be amazing. Oh yeah, that's pretty nice. There's the epigastric artery. Can you get deeper, Brandon, on the epigastric right there? You see that vessel right there? That's all right. Oh, there's suture. Now, this is an orchiectomy. The other side, I have no idea what that guy was doing, but this is a real orchiectomy. This is usually the part of the case where I start questioning the surgical skills of the person doing the orchiectomy. Like, you know, how come you didn't leave a suture? How come you didn't take some cord? Were you just trying to get out of the hospital quickly? You know. But now we've got we've got suture here. I think this is clearly two different surgeons, I think, did this these orchiectomies. Hello, get back here. Brandon, if you can just be gentle on that epigastric, come off, come off, Brandon. Just, just come down on top of it if you can, that'd be really wonderful. Okay, all right. Okay, that's fine. We'll... All right, just, just. All right, let's get an extraction sack, please. A bag. A small bag. Huh? I can't hear you, what? Hello? Jim? Yeah. Okay. So you're done, right? Yeah, we're done. <laughs> very nice job. Okay. All super, right. super relative, huh? Very yep. happy with this surgery. Yeah, very happy. Okay. All right. We're just, Congratulations. Just trying to get a bag. Thank you so much. All right. Congratulations, Jim. Okay. Thank you we so much. We saw the picture up to now, eh? We were with you. Okay. Can we get the bag, please? So I would say that you deserve a big, big applause from the audience. Um, Thank you. Thank you very much. As always, uh, it's a big pleasure to see such a beautiful surgery with a, such a beautiful anatomy. So yeah. thank you, Jim. Um, uh, I think for the moderators, uh, we can give, move give back, give back, give back, to the room uh, with uh, Dr. Bachhaus. Oh, you're there? Yeah, right here. Okay, so you're really, I don't know what happened. Oh, there you go. Okay, so here you are. Um, Again, thank you, Jim. Thank you. I think you did a wonderful job. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Uh, we had a great team here, really great OR. The staff here is amazing. Really want to thank you all, and I hope you guys were able to learn something from this. Really, really appreciate your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. So can we move to room the number we need uh, the extraction set. three with... Uh, is that it? That's the bag? I want a small bag. No, 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 just small bag. Small. 